On the dashboard tab, you may input your core inputs or drivers for the model, see the core financials and core outputs on the charts. So let's set up this model and we will start from units of measurement. We have two options here to set up average units of measurement and mass units of measurement. Please note that each yellow cell has its own explanation of what you are supposed to input. It's just easier to navigate across the model and to understand what you are supposed to input here. So let's set up the acreage, for example, in square feet and the mass in pounds. So the next step is to set up your total land acreage by years, for example, 5000 first year and additional 1000 acres each next year. The next step is to allocate this total acreage by owned acreage and leased or rented acreage. For example, 30%, 35, 40, 45 and 50 for the owned. And the rest obviously will be leased. In the next section you may see the absolute values of acreage in square feet based on this allocation and total land acreage. And the next step is to set up your purchase cost per square foot and the rent cost per square foot per month, so for example 10,000 and additional thousand dollars will be the purchase cost per square foot and the rent cost can be 300, 350, 400, 450 and 500. The calculation of rent you may see on the variable expenses, land rent cost, on the asset step you may see the total of net land amount and the capital expenditure by months in section number two. And once you set up everything, all the expenses, wages and revenue assumptions, you may review your core financials, the revenue breakdown, profitability, cash flow and the cumulative cash flow charts. On the income statement tab, you may see your main components of your profit and loss, which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, EBDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, your corporate tax, and as a result, net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses, or for variable expenses, or for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement, you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in a direct method, operating, investing and financing activities, but in more collapsed form, just easier to see the information here. And the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here or can down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet, main KPIs broken down by five years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the five years and for 12 months for the selected year as well as charts with the same information. On the benchmark KPI step, you may compare up to five benchmark KPIs with your industry standards. For example, gross margin, the industry standard is 60% for your country, for your business, and you may see on this chart, gross margin industry KPI is changed, which is orange here. You have also net profit, wages as a percentage of revenue, harvest productivity, pounds per square foot per year and the acreage square foot per direct FTE. All these yellow cells which are industry KPIs are changeable, net profit can be 20% for example for your industry for your country and to the right of these yellow cells you may see the values calculated by the model, driven by assumptions you input it before on the revenue 
expenses and wages tabs. The same information you may see on the charts, which is gross margin, net profit, wages as a percentage of revenue, harvest productivity and acreage square foot per direct FTE. On each chart you may see the orange, this is industry specific benchmark and as a blue value, this is a value calculated by the model. On the financial chart step, you may see your main financial KPIs on the two sets of charts, which is the breakdown of two years by months and the breakdown of five years by months. So on the top, you may see the EBIT amount. The next set of charts will show you the revenue breakdown by products. The next operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow. The next set of charts will show you the cash balance by months for the two years and for the five years. And on the last set of charts, you will see the EBGA as a yellow line and the breakdown of this EBGA, which includes the revenue, COX and OPEX. On the operational chart step, you may see two sets of charts, which is breakdown of two years by months and five years by months. On the top, you may see the acreage allocation by five categories of products. The next set of charts will show you the production amount in pounds in this case, excluding the losses. And the last set of charts will show you the sales volume broken down by products and also break down by months for two years and five years. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with a total below. And also to the right, you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below, you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab, you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here, cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model, there is two valuation methods, which is a BGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information, we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow, you may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow and PV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. On the top revenue tab, you may see the breakdown of your revenue by products and also by years with absolute values and percentage breakdown. The same information you may see on the charts below. Here you may see the percentage breakdown and absolute values breakdown. 
Below you may see the revenue depth and monthly run rate chart. You can select the year and based on this year you will see the information of revenue by products as absolute values and percentage revenue breakdown on the pie chart. On the revenue bridge you may find the main revenue drivers of growth. You may select the first year and you may select the last year and between these years you will see the waterfall chart and you may see which are the main drivers of your revenue growth, which specific products grow faster and which specific products grow slower. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally you have content tab which allow you to navigate across the model very simple so you may click on any report and you can go back it is broken down by reports assumptions statements and setup there is short explanation about what each tab does but if you want to know more you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the revenue tab, you can input your revenue assumptions related to the model. So first of all, you need to set the product names. All these cells are adjustable. For example, instead of product A, you can select tomatoes, for example, etc. The next step is to allocate your acreage by these products and by years. For example, 10% for product A in the first year, then 12, 15, 18, and 20. The fifth product in this allocation is calculation, means that 100% minus previous four allocations if you will input something wrong for example 90% here 15 for the second product 20 for third 25 for fourth you have minus 50 which is 100% minus sum of previous four this means that this is wrong you will see the red color this means you need to adjust something in the model to have the gray color which means that everything is okay here the next step will show you the acreage allocation square feet by years across the products to understand what the amount in absolute values and the next step is to set up your productivity or production per harvest this is now in uh, pounds per square foot but again on the dashboard you will be able to change the matrix so you can set the acres and kilograms for example if you would like by default you will see the square feet and pounds so you can set this productivity by products like 100, 110, 120, 140, 160. And this is again per one harvest. Where to set up count of harvests, I will show you a bit later. The next step is to set up your losses ratio. Obviously you have losses, so you can input percentage of losses for each harvest. It means that, for example, 4%, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is changeable by products and by years. You can also just zero out if you don't need any losses, as well as if you don't need, for example, four products. If you need just three products, you can just adjust values. And for example, 50, 25, 25. And you will have in your model only three products. In this case, you can clean all the assumptions related to product number three and number four. That's also an option. Let me switch it back. 
So the next step is to set up the sales price per pound. This is also by years. So you can set, for example, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. That's obvious. And the last step on this step is to set up sales period. It means that after harvest, you will sell all your production uh, within six months. If you don't need this, you can just put one month and all, this, all the production will be sold within one month after the harvest. So the next step is to set up count of harvests on the seasonality tab. So you have five products and you have uh, the months of allocation starting from January to December and you can just select on. This means you'll have first harvest in March, then you can select on for August. This means the second year harvest will happen in August and the same for each product. So you can select just one harvest, for example, in May for product B and that works for everything. If you just need to turn off, just select off and you just turn it off the harvest in the May. That's how that works. On the cost of goods sold tab, you can input up to five different categories or components of your cost of goods sold. The first line item is reserved for direct salaries and wages, which is calculated on direct wages tab. So this is already calculated. You don't need to change any assumption here. And also you have five line items. Some of them are predefined. For example, seeds, nutrients, other cocks. If you don't need, you can just type anything you want, like type A, type B cocks, or any name you would like. And you have two options here to calculate as a dollar per square foot per month or as a percentage of total revenue. So you have seeds, for example, $20 per square foot, or you can input seeds as a 5% of revenue, like this. On the top you have the main drivers, like total revenue, total acreage, total production in pounds. Below you have the calculations of these categories by months and by products. And in income statement you may find under Cox section, this calculation also categorized by category and by months. On the direct wages tab, you may input your direct wages assumptions. You have up to 19 categories broken down by three sections. Let me show you how it works. So first, five direct accounts. You can adjust as a parameter means that one FT per basis and the basis in this case is per square foot and this can be one FT per 200 square foot or it can be one FT per 150 square foot for the type number two and depending on the acreage you will have the calculation of direct employees here. Also you can set up the annual salary per one FT which can be for example $20,000 you can input annual salary rise, 5% for example, per year. Below you may see the calculation of annual salary depending on base salary and for depending on annual salary rise. We have also, also monthly bonus which can be 10% for example. And the tax rate which is payroll tax, for example 20% or 12% in this case. Below you may see the calculation staff numbers, or headcount numbers, salaries, monthly bonus and monthly base taxes. The next category or type is to drive your direct headcount as a parameter per pounds of production. It means that per 10,000 of pounds production you'll have one FTE. Again you can set up salary, salary rise, monthly bonus, payroll tax rate and you will see the amount of headcount which is needed depending on the production driven by the revenue assumptions. And the final tab in this case is to set up your direct headcount as just hire date, for example February 20, fire date can be the last date of the model and the basis is manual entry, you can set up the salary as well, $10,000 and you can adjust numbers of uh, direct employees manually. 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. 
In income statement under Cox section, you may see the di direct salaries and wages calculation. So it's a part of your cost of goods sold. On the variable expenses tab, you can input up to five different categories or components of your variable expenses. So the first line item is reserved for land rent cost, which you set up on the dashboard here. So you have amount of rent cost per square foot per month. So the calculation you may see in here, in the first line item. Also you have up to five another categories. Some of them are predefined. You can change the names like our expenses two, for example, or something like that, any name you would like. And you have four different types of how you would like to calculate it. As dollar per square foot per month can be changeable also, three, for example. As dollar per one pound of production, for example, for packaging can be one dollar, for example. As dollar per square foot per month, which can be four. And two line items for the calculation of as a percentage of revenue, for example, 2% of revenue. On the top, you have the main drivers, which is total revenue, total acreage, and total production. Below, you may find the calculation for these categories by months. And in the income statement under variable expenses category, you may see these values allocated by categories and allocated by months. the fixed expenses tab you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses let me show you how it works for example you have utilities you will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model which is December 24 you may see it here let's pretend periodicity will be daily with amount of $50 per day. So you may see these amounts in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with the amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B-weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two weekly payments within the months 500 dollars multiplied by two you have one thousand dollars per month again you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the august 24 which is the last date of this expense type another option office setup which can be one time payment which will happen in February 20 with amount of $5,000. Obviously you should not input any gross rates because this is just one time fee and you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option insurance let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model and it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month is 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third, and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here. Starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50. And starting from January 22, it will grow for 
which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly, you may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually, in this case you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments, you will pay one time per 12 months, starting from February till December 24. For each expense type you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. On the admin wages tab, you can set up up to 19 categories for your admin staff. Let me show you how it works. For example, managers. This higher date starting, for example, from February 20 till the end of the model. You can adjust annual salary per one headcount, can be, for example, $40,000. Then you should input number of admin employees. Let's pretend in the 2020 it will be one, then two, three, four, and five. Then also, you can input annual salary rise. So, for example, 3% of annual salary first year for next, five, and six. Also here you have set up for the monthly bonus, for example, five percentage per month, and the payroll tax rate, for example, 12. Below you may see the calculation of annual salary, depends on the annual salary for the base year and for the annual salary rise. Also here you can see the calculation of number of headcounts, it starts in February because we set up February start of hire. Here you can have a monthly base salaries, monthly bonus calculation and monthly base taxes, which is payroll taxes. And under income statement you have total admin salaries and wages section, where you may see the breakdown of all your headcounts categories and the breakdown the values by months. On the CapEx tab, you may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of examples. So, for example, office development with purchase date of February 20 with spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development. And you will have some balance of CapEx accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example, other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 is zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find in Assets tab. By default it has useful time for five years for the calculation of depreciation. You may find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may also find capital expenditure and closing netbook value. Additionally, you have up to six placeholders for other assets, for example, other assets with useful time of 10 years with cost of $25,000 and with launch date in April. You may find it in here, you can see capital expenditure and we see book depreciation by months for this amount and you may see closing net book value. 
the total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement on the cash flow you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets and on the balance sheet you may find fixed assets amount under non-current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well also on the top of the dashboard have debt assumptions let me show you how it works so for the each debt we are able to select the debt type there are two debt types in the model, which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment, which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses, will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual, your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input amount of the debt, the launch date, term the 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it. No repayments, no terms in terms of interest. So all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for the debt number one, debt number two, debt number three. Total debt with grants. These calculations impacts income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet you have the debt closing balance. On the capitalization table you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding with different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders Founder 1, Founder 2. So, total amount of shares for Founder 1 can be 10,000. For Founder number 2, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for Founder 1 is $20,000, for Founder 2 is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So, let's pretend that for Series A we have one investor. And the date of issuance is May. Cost per share is $5 per share. And number of shares is 1000 so total amount of investment will be five thousand dollars you may see that before the series a total equity was sixteen thousand dollars after sixty five thousand dollars and investor one will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of founder one and founder two also diluted 32.26 and 46.52 percentage you can also input some amounts for series B and series C. The same way you can set up the date, cost of share, and up to five investors is up to five placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings, and you may see the balance sheet, which shows you the total equity by months. On the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. 
you have currency outputs it can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs so let me give an example when you input in United States dollars you have euro as an output and for this case you can set up currency exchange rate this is 1.2 for example in this case you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars all your outputs in euros and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs additionally you have denomination which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports in this example you have denomination is 1000 mean that your outputs is denominated by 1000 you can select millions you may see that now it is in million dollars you can set also billions or without any denomination additionally you have corporate tax setup you can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement I hope you enjoyed my video thanks for reviewing this uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.